This is Katrin with Disability Rights New York. Welcome to our podcast, Empire State of Rights, closed captioned. We are here to bring you information on the most relevant topics regarding disability rights and advocacy. Today, we welcome Diana Fuentes Gomez, intake specialist, and Talia Santiago, CAP advocate at DRNY. They're here to discuss Hispanic Heritage Month, which takes place from September 15th to October 15th. Diana Tulia, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having us, Katrin. Thank you so much, guys, for this interesting project. Diana, let's start with you. Can you start by telling us what Hispanic Heritage Month is and how is it being celebrated here at DRNY? Well, Hispanic Heritage Month celebrates and recognizes the contribution Hispanic Americans has made to the American society. Disabilities Rights of New York is celebrating this year, Hispanic Heritage Month, honoring influential Hispanics who has made an impact on our society. We will be showing in our social media each day something about Hispanic culture and the contribution to the American society. And Talia, for those who don't know or maybe are unfamiliar with, let's talk about the differences between Spanish, Hispanic, Latino, Latina, and Latinx. A lot of people may think that this is all the same group of people, but let's break it down and let our audience know the difference. Yeah, this is extremely complicated and it's probably one of like the top five questions that I get on a regular basis. So let's get into it. I might be going down a rabbit hole, but um, I'll try to explain it and break it down as best as possible. So someone who identifies as being a Latino is a person who is native or inhabitant of Latin America. And it's also a term that's used for a male who is from Latin America. Latina is a woman or a girl who is native of Latin America. Hispanic is someone who derives from a Spanish-speaking country. And Spanish, which people often confuse for, like they'll ask me, are you Spanish? No, I'm not Spanish. (laughs) Spanish is a person who is from Spain. And the term Latinx is pretty much a new term that you'll hear a lot. And it's also a term used to define a person from Latin America, but it's a gender neutral term. So just for a fun fact, the word was created as a gender neutral alternative to Latinos, not only to include those who are gender fluid, but also to push back on the masculine term, which is Latinos, which is used to describe all genders in Spanish. And so let's talk a little bit more about that. Of course, there are so many different new words that are coming up, which is great because having a a language that can be organic and expansive to include people is just one of the wonderful things about what we're talking about right now. Let's also talk about an Afro-Latino, Latina, or Latinx. Talk to us a little bit about that. Sure. So this term is a term that's being used now for people who are from Latin America, but derived from African ancestry. And can you give us an example of that? Sure. So for instance, I'll use myself as an example. Like for instance, I identify as being Afro-Latino because my father has African ancestry. He is from North Africa originally. His ancestors are from North Africa, but he was born in Latin American country. And so can you also identify as, or can one person identify as Latino, Latina, Latinx, but not Hispanic? So the answer is yes. So just because you're from a Latin American country doesn't mean that you're also Hispanic because you would have to come from a Spanish speaking country in order to identify as Hispanic. And so I think the term race is something that often we see in the news and social media, and a lot of times it isn't truly being used and or understood for what it is. Is Hispanic or Latino considered a race? No, it's actually an ethnicity. And so, Diana, uh, Spanish, is this the only language that is spoken in Latin America? Catherine, no. This is not the only language that is spoken. Spanish is spoken in Latin America, pre-colonization, there were over 2,000 languages spoken in Latin America. Currently, there are more than 560 languages, which includes the Spanish, Portuguese, Dutch, French, Creole, and other non-indigenous languages. 
It's so interesting that the languages would include ones that maybe people wouldn't think about, like Dutch, French, and Creole. A lot of times people wouldn't necessarily put those together. Um, but let's talk about the Spanish dialects. How many are there? And is this something that is considered to be part of someone's location? Or is it part of their family system? Or can it be both? Well, right now there are 10 major Spanish dialects. And these depend on the location of the person. Uh, we have Castilian. We have Andalusian. We have Marcian. We have Canarian. We have Lanido. We have Latin American Spanish. That's this, my Spanish. We have Rio Platense Spanish. We have Caribbean Spanish, which is Talia's Spanish. We have Equatorian Guinea Spanish. And the last one is the Cora. Each one is for different countries. And so with all of the different dialects, is there a, a common thread that is spoken throughout that if you are from one location and you're going and visiting another, is it easy or easy enough to communicate with someone who has a, a different dialect? I think the most frequently used from my experience, has been the Caribbean Spanish and Latin American Spanish. Latin American Spanish is considered to be more proper, where Caribbean Spanish is more broken up, if that makes sense. Yeah, the Latin American Spanish is one of the most spoken in, in, in the whole world because it contains all South America mostly, Central America, and part of North America. But we can still communicate even with different dialects. Right. So the words are a little different. Like, for instance, if I'll give you an example. Like, a lawyer has like five, six, seven different words depending on which Latin American country you ask. So that's just an example. There's about six different words just for the word lawyer. This is such great information, and I'm so glad that DRNY is celebrating in this way this year, and I look forward to learning more about what we're going to do for the rest of the month. And before we sign off, do you have any final thoughts or messages that you'd like to let our audience know about? Únanse a Disabilities Rights of New York para celebrar el mes de la herencia hispana. Juntos podemos. Join DRNY in celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. Together, we can. Diana and Talia, thank you so much for your time today. It was so great talking to you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having us. Empire State of Rights closed captioned has been brought to you by Disability Rights New York, your source for disability rights and advocacy. If you enjoyed our program, make sure to subscribe, like, and share this post. If there is a subject you would like us to discuss, please email podcast at drny.org or comment below. Tune in next Wednesday, where we'll bring you more information on disability rights in the state of New York. The closed captioned and ASL version of this podcast is available on our YouTube channel. To listen to more Empire State of Rights closed captioned, follow us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify.